GM Mike Mayock is excited and energized about the state of the Raiders online heading into the NFL draft. Now, uh, this one's very, very interesting because Mike Mayock, if you guys don't know, uh, did a presser yesterday specifically just taking a bunch of questions. Um, and I want to go over some of the things that he said because it was pretty interesting, man. He was asked a ton of questions. Um, and I, I don't want to go into every single question. I just want to focus in on a couple of key points of that interview that I liked. If you guys want to watch it, just go to the Raiders uh, YouTube channel and just go watch the full video. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think this first question that Mayock was asked, and this wasn't the first question. I think this was the second or third. Uh, but this is the first one that really popped out to me. Uh, Mike Mayock was basically asked about you know potentially taking a right tackle um, and here's what he had to say um, and we're going to just read it word for word of what Mike Mayock says and I quote you know it's funny because the public perception is ah the Raiders they made a bunch of moves in the offensive line therefore they're gonna be worse there I'm kind of energized by it to be really honest with you Mayock said over the video call we redid our left tackles contract, Colton Miller, and that showed our locker room that we were willing to be really aggressive in signing one of our own and somebody we believe is a cornerstone. And then people are like, yeah, but you traded away one of the best centers in football. And we did, but you can't make that move unless you think you've got somebody right behind him that can come in and compete. So we look at Andre James and Nick Martin and say, look, we feel like we can compete at center. And I want to pause this before we go forward. Um, there's two parts I want to talk about of this these past two paragraphs uh, first and foremost it was the colton miller uh, situ uh being re-signed in that situation um, it's kind of interesting to me that mike mayock said um that it showed our locker room that we were willing to be really aggressive in signing one of our own uh, why would you have to show your locker room anything is that like a a, a perception or is that something that people think or is that something that mayock and gruden might think that players think or, or people around the league think that the Raiders aren't willing to sign their own? Um, or is it something that fans have been saying, right? Because I, I know some fans have said those things, right? Uh, when we let go of, of players like Shelby Harris, um, Danico Autry, Mario Edwards, more recently, Mo Hurst and Arden Key, when we know that a lot of those guys have a, a ton of potential, right? Um, either way, that was kind of interesting. Um, and then the second part I want to talk about is the fact that... Uh, Mike Mayock does not seem like there's a huge drop off from Rodney Hudson to Andre James. And I kind of don't disagree with him, right? And I know right now it doesn't look like that, right? Because Rodney Hudson was at the top of his game. And Andre James, no one really knows what he could be, right? Most people have not watched Andre James. Most people that are watching this video have not watched Andre James. And I know I have. And I know some of you guys watched my film study. Some of you guys have watched other highlights as well but for the most part most people don't know who Andre James is but I don't think the drop off is going to be that big in fact I think the Raiders are very high on Andre James and it's crazy because the the very first time I ever watched Andre James in preseason in 2019 I saw right away that this guy has something to his game uh, I think I did a film study if not a film study I, I put out some sort of highlights or some sort of videos and then on top of that on Twitter I put out a couple of videos on Twitter saying that the Raiders need to keep this guy around. At that point, they did. And, and it looks like he is going to be the replacement for Rodney Hudson. Again, I don't think the drop-off is going to be that huge because I do think Rodney Hudson was on his way down. But let's just get back into the article. Um, and there's a part <laughs> somewhere down here, we'll get into it, that I really want to talk about. Uh, some of you guys might have already heard of it. but um, And I quote Mike Mayock, we're getting younger. I'm excited and energized by what our offensive line group is starting to look like. And I'm excited and energized because I think that Tom Cable feels the same way. We have all the respect in the world for Rodney and Gabe and Trent. But at this point, we made a conscious decision to try to get younger, maybe a little bit more athletic, and let's go. I can't wait to see how we react. Um, that's a direct shot, I think, at, at both Trent and Gabe and possibly even Rodney, right? Uh, but more, more, more towards Trent. Uh, he's saying we're trying to get more athletic, um, and we know Trent Brown was the complete opposite of athletic. And I know he's still an NFL player, and I, and I get all that. Uh, but for NFL, uh, you know, comparison sake, he was not very athletic, and we all know that to be a fact. He was super slow. 
Um, Gabe Jackson wasn't as bad. Rodney Hudson wasn't as bad as far as like being athletic. And what I think Mike Mayock is actually trying to say is uh, for Tom Cable's system, you need a Colton Miller. You need an Andre James, right? You need those guys that are quick, that can get to, you know, go right to left and get to the next level. Even though Richie Incognito is up there in age, he's older, Richie Incognito is still super quick. And he's super athletic and he fits Tom Cable's system, right? Tom Cable would rather take five guys off the street that are fast than guys, five guys like Trent Brown that can't move. Because five guys like Trent Brown that can't move uh, are not going to be able to get those blocks and those angles that you need to have a successful run game. Um, and I know people will say, well, Trent Brown's a power guy, but that's not what Tom Cable is doing with his O-line. Uh, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and scroll down. Now, here, here's the thing, right? Uh, I, I want to talk about this paragraph uh, because this one's interesting. Uh, so, of course, the question was, who's the Raiders' right tackle and the O-line and blah, 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 blah. Um, Mike Mayock said, we've got a guy named Jared Jones-Smith that we signed off the street last week that we think has a chance to be a really good football player. May Mayock said of his plans at right tackle. I'm kind of excited about him. That's very, very interesting, man, because now people are scrambling. Like, who the hell's Jared Jones-Smith? Like, the guy has yet to play in the NFL. Um... Well, let's watch his film because your boy has the all 22 film and your boy is going to uh, share some film with you guys. And I apologize if this doesn't look good on your guys' screen. Um, I already know that just looking at this from the way I'm looking at it, you guys are going to see all these out. You know, you're going to see nothing up here. Let me actually just see if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys. Um, that should be a little bit better. But here he is, Jared Jones. Um, number 55, let me, Jared Jones Smith, sorry, uh, here he is, number 55, let's, let's check his film out, man, let's see what kind of player this guy's gonna be for the Raiders, um, you see that first player out there, not, not bad, okay, not bad, it was just a run play, uh, let's get into the second play, um, again, here he is, right tackle, number 55, uh, nice little 45 degree set, okay, that's not bad, let's go ahead and get into the next play, and we'll watch like, you know, eight or nine plays of his, uh, just to kind of see what kind of football player he is, um, okay, that's a nice little, okay, okay, let's, let's break this down, man, that's a, uh, that's a good, that's a good looking play right there, let me see if I can slow this down for you guys, awesome, so I can, I'm gonna slow it down to 0. 0.5, um, first and foremost, look at this, look at this base, man, nice, nice little 45 degree set, nice punch, he isn't leaning, waits for that second counter and punches his guy again, that's beautiful, man, maybe this guy is the Raiders right tackle, that right there is a good freaking rep, and that's what I want to see from uh, the Raiders' potential starting right tackle, right? Uh, let's jump forward, man, and, and let's get into the next one. Um, again, he's right there at right tackle, and we'll see kind of what the play is, and we'll see what he does. Uh, let me go ahead, and I'll just leave it at point five. Okay. So, um, he, he does have a hard block. I will say that right there for him to get to the inside of this guy, that's almost an impossible block. Um, I think realistically, his uh, guy would probably be this guy if, if this guy came around. Um, let's go ahead and look at it one more time. Yeah, that's a very, very tough block. Um, I, I will say this, though, right? I mean, he is on the back side of this guy. If this guy tried coming back up, I'm, I'm sure he can probably cut that off. Um, at this point, he knows that guy's not going to make the play. Okay, that's not bad. I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and, and let's get into the next play. Uh, again, we only look at end zone angle, right? We don't look at the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's a screen. Okay. So, originally, that looked bad. That that looked bad. I thought, okay, dude, this guy just whiff right here on this block. Um, but that's okay. All right? It's a, it's a screen. He, he understands that. Uh, if you guys watch it from the All-22, it, it's probably a little bit more clear. Uh, if a guy goes the inside... You let him go and you go find the next guy and that's kind of what he did um kind of a slow reaction in my opinion but okay let's let's go ahead and, and look at a couple more blocks so this is the same play let me go forward to the next one um <clears throat> here he is uh play goes away from him let's go to the next one let's just watch a couple more plays uh we probably could get into the next game as well but uh, maybe I'll, I'll do a full breakdown of his uh maybe in the future uh, not a good block, but that was kind of looked like a broken play from the from the start. To be honest with you, uh, 87 does a nice job. 88 whips. Uh, yeah, the, I mean the running back should have cut it. 
uh, to the inside, right? Uh, the lane's going to open right through here. Obviously, I don't know what, who, who this running back is, but right there, right through there, right? 55's kicking out. You got a down block, got an out block. He should have kicked this right through here. Uh, that's on the running back, and of course, the running back's probably just going to lose a yard or two or, or maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Um, I mean, just kind of looking at him, like he, he doesn't look like a bad offense tackle. I think, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to kind of see what Tom Cable can do with him. You know, Tom Cable is, is the guru of offensive linemen. Uh, he, he creates some of the best offensive linemen, right? He, he'll take a nobody. Uh, he'll get him in his system and, you know, he'll, he'll make that guy a somebody. Um, a pretty good block right here, man. You look at how him and number 88 drive, like look at where they make contact, right? Like look at the hash, the hash marks here. Look at where the numbers are and look at how much they push this guy outwards. Like that right there is how you move somebody. I mean, look at that. That is how you move somebody, man. Um, that's a pretty nice block right there. Uh, let's just watch a couple more. Um, where is he? He's playing I think that's him right there. You have this little uh, three lineman to the left of the center. Uh, he has his left hand down. Understand something, you guys. Playing on the right side, notice how these guys have their right hand down. Playing on the left side, notice how he now has his left hand down. It's a big deal because for the Raiders, that's going to show, can this guy be our swing tackle? Um, and that is a possibility. He could be our swing tackle, right? Um Maybe he starts, man. Who knows? Uh, what's interesting is that Mike Mayock mentioned Jared Jones uh, Smith. He didn't mention uh, at all Brandon Parker. You would think, okay, he's going to mention Brandon Parker because that's that's the Raiders guy, right? Um, here, here's a block that I want to kind of discuss. Now, understanding this is from the left side. He usually plays right, so it's a little bit different. Um, him and this guard are double teaming, and then he needs to get to the inside, right? His helmet lands to the wrong side. His helmet lands to the left of, of that defensive tackle from where we're looking at it. Um, but he is able to kind of turn his hips, uh, which you guys see. That's It's an okay block, but this play wasn't going to go anywhere anyways. Um, let's look at the final play right here, man. Let's just see what he does on this last play. Uh, maybe he, he he pancakes someone, right? Maybe, maybe he does something special. Um, let's check this play out. Uh, it's just a nice little jump say that's okay you know it's it is what it is let me see if there's another game right here um it's the same game um but yeah man um let's let's go ahead and, and jump back in into this this article here um you know it, it is interesting right if, if you guys think about it the raiders have how many offensive linemen now like you know that that could possibly play right tackle you have jared jones you have brian parker um sam young i think is a free agent so that wouldn't really count you have denzel good who could possibly play right tackle uh, so you have three guys that could possibly play right tackle uh, you know I, I mentioned that on james could possibly play right tackle like what if it happens and, and for the most part that's that's i mean i'm joking about it at the end of the day he's already taking snaps with Derek. you can see those uh, pictures you can see those those videos of Derek working out with Andre snapping him the ball. Andre James is not playing right tackle, right? Andre James is our center. Right tackle though, there's three guys that could possibly start. Assuming we don't draft someone, I would not personally draft a, a right tackle. Like I, I don't think it makes sense to take a right tackle on in the first round. Um, you know, right tackle is, is one of the most important positions on the offense, right? Uh, right after quarterback, left tackle, I think right tackle and left tackle. I think both offense tackle positions are, are equally as important. Right after quarterback, tackle is probably the second most important position. Um, I, I think the Raiders need a future right tackle, but I don't know if we need to do that this year. Uh, I would be fine with, with uh, a mixture of, of Brandon Parker, Denzel Good. Um, and then Jared Jones, right? See what he can do at, at that right tackle position. Um, you know, again, the only four offense tackles I would even consider at, at pick 17, Tevin Jenkins, Rashawn Slater, Panay Sewell, um, and Christian Derisaw. Those are the only four guys I would consider. Let's get back into this article and let's just finish it off. Um, obviously, in free agency, whether it's normal free agency period or what you've done on the street the prior year, you're trying to set yourself up in the draft so you can take the best player you can take, Mayock continued. We're very aware of our needs, and obviously when your needs fit up and where you are on the draft board, that's awesome. But when they don't, you have to be a little careful. Um, and, and that is a fact, right? Like, the Raiders kind of have had needs over the last couple of years. 
Um, you know, we didn't have a need at wide receiver as, as much, I would say, when we took Henry Ruggs. Uh, because at that point, like, you know, I, I don't think a receiver is that important. I think having a good O-line, young, good, cheap offensive line, having a good quarterback, having a good tight end, I think those positions are more important because a wide receiver is easier to find, right? With the 25th pick, you can find a superstar wide receiver. Uh, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf went after the first round, right? You can find superstar wide receivers. There's a ton of them in the NFL already. There's a ton coming out of college every single year. Um, so I do think you need to build everything else first. And uh, last year we took Henry Ruggs. And then we did have a need at corner and we took Arnett. And I feel like the Raiders kind of wanted like C.J. Henderson um, or one of these other corners, right, that ended up going before the Raiders got to pick. So uh, either way, I want to shift focus. And since we are talking about Henry Ruggs and Damon Arnett, I want to just get into what Mike Mayock said uh, about the two young guys, man. Uh, you know, these guys have, uh, I wouldn't say they've been disappointing, but they haven't been great, right? Um, and I think that, that that is something that Mike Mayock is, is thinking about, right? He, him and Gruden are thinking about how Ruggs and, and Arnett have kind of panned out. Now, here's the thing. I think Ruggs is going to be a perfectly fine player. And I think Arnett's going to be a perfectly fine player as well. Uh, you know, I was talking to my uh, buddy um, on Raid the Tape uh, just the other day about Arnett. And the thing with Arnett is uh, he's, he's a tough physical player, right? He'll tackle somebody. Uh, and I know he's gotten hurt, but he can still come up and he's not scared to make a tackle. And if you put him in zone coverage... Um, he can succeed at it, right? Like, he's still a young player. He'll have a lot to develop still. But I will talk a little bit about what Mike Mayock said about the two guys. He said, I'm excited about both of them. I don't think there's any question in our building how talented they both are, which is a fact. Both guys are super talented. Henry's got to get stronger, which he has. Uh, Damon's got to get stronger. They're both spending an awful lot of time this offseason, both with the strength and also the conditioning aspects. In my mind, we're going to see different guys. I made a comment a couple months ago about Ruggs and about the whole class last year needing to step up this year, and I still believe that. And from Ruggs' perspective, the sky is the limit for this kid. We knew exactly what he was, and that's who he is. We had no surprises last year on Ruggs. Now he needs to take it to the next level too, the next level up. Stronger, better route runner, finish, get both feet down, all those things, and we think he will. Same thing with Arnett, up and down year, injured, COVID, all kinds of different issues. We need consistency and effort, and I'm a big believer in both of those kids. I'm really excited to see them play this year. Um, and, and you know, Mike Mayock hit it right there on the head, right, with his, his comments on these two guys. And uh, both guys have a lot of potential, right? The It's not like these guys are, you know, going into their fourth or fifth year like some of our recent players, right? Like Arden Key was going into his fourth year. We kind of knew what he was. Like he had a lot of potential, but he couldn't just, just finish, right? Arnett and Ruggs are still going into just their second NFL year. This is the biggest leap they'll take. Uh, Mullen's going into his third year. Uh, Abram's technically going into his second year, even though it is his third year. Um, and this is, you know, third year is the year to prove it. Furrow, Abram, uh, all these guys have to prove it this year that the, they are the future for the Raiders um, because every single one of those guys can get $15 million. Some of those guys are going to get cut. Some of those guys might end up traded. Uh, but those guys have to prove it. And Arnett and Ruggs are in the perfect position to prove what they can do. Um, I want to shift focus and talk a, finally, lastly, about this tweet right here. Um, first and foremost, about one hour ago, um, Ian Rappaport actually put this tweet out. Uh, and, and I quote Ian, it seems like a yearly ritual, but once again, the Raiders did extensive work on all the top quarterbacks, I'm told. If one slides past number 10, they could be a team to watch to grab a quarterback and stash for the future. Doubtful that a quarterback gets to 19, but they will have their homework ready. Um, and then, you know, after all the comments, he went ahead and said, case in point, Raiders GM Mike Mayock was a staple at all quarterback pro days. Now here's the thing, right? Mike Mayock was at all pro days last year too. Um, if Mike Mayock has an extra day and he's able to make his flight to go see the, the quarterbacks, why would he not, right? Like, at what point do you think it's okay not to watch the quarterbacks? At a pro day, the quarterback makes every freaking possible throw. It's scripted. You get a script and it tells you exactly which throw is coming next. Every single one of these things is 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 going to uh, be, be done at the pro day. Why would you not go and watch these guys? When the Denver Broncos take Justin Fields with the ninth pick, wouldn't you have wanted to do your research on Justin Fields? 
when you heard that the Chargers were inter interested in Justin Herbert, wouldn't you want to go watch Justin Herbert to see what his weaknesses might be? I mean, it's common as sense, you know, and I, I don't understand it. Um, you know, to me, it, it kind of seems like uh, every year these these uh, these media people, Ian Rappaport, and there's a couple Raider ones out there as well, uh, that have, have put it out there. They've thrown it out there that, oh, the Raiders are interested in, in taking um, – a specific guy right a specific quarterback or they're gonna trade Derek he's on trade block it seems like they're doing this every single year just to see that uh, maybe one one year it'll be correct right uh, you know again these are the same guys that once card does move on from the Raiders if it's in two years in five years in ten years um, they're the same guys that I'm gonna say yep you know I, I I'm right I, I just said it that they're gonna move on but it's like you've been saying it every year for the last 15 years right uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about Mike Mayock's interview. If you guys watched it in full, let me know in the comments below. Uh, Jared Jones, is he the future right tackle? Is he not? Right, He's been getting a lot of uh, you know hype, I, I should say. Uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. You know, It, it allows you guys to kind of see when my videos are, uh, when they're created and uploaded. You guys can then be able to see. Um, I really appreciate every single one of you guys. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.